All right, today I'm going to walk you through the intensely complicated process of setting up RetroArch, a video game emulator front end that kind of makes it so you can play a bunch of different old school games using a modern slick little interface. First things first, we're going to download RetroArch, which you can get from the libretro.com website. Head to the download section, then head to your operating system of choice. Make sure you grab the newest version, which currently is 1.2.2. Once that's downloaded, you'll go ahead and just unzip it, and then install it. And open it up. Once you get that open, you'll be greeted by the Retro Arch user interface, which is baffling at first, but let's go ahead and just dig into a few things before we get started. First things first, we're going to start off with settings. Now you can move with either the arrow keys, or if your gamepad is plugged in already, you should be able to use that. But we are going to configure that gamepad first, though, to make sure the buttons are where they should be. So, head to Settings, Input, and then select the User 1 Bind All option, and go ahead and follow the on-screen prompts to make sure your controller is set up properly. If you're not using a controller and just the keyboard, you can navigate with the arrow keys. Back to this menu, we're going to pop up to the Menu Toggle Gamepad Combo option. I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller, so I'm going to set this to L3 and R3. This will allow me to get back to the Retro Arch menu at any time while I'm in-game by pressing those two buttons at once. Obviously, you pick whichever of those options works best for the controller you're using. Next up, we're going to tinker with a couple of the video settings before we get started as well. These are kind of just universal things that pretty much everyone's going to want to change just to make sure that games look and run properly and work as they should. I want to make sure that VSync is set to on, hard GPU sync is set to on, and hardware bilinear filtering is set to off. Now, while you're in here, you can also turn on full screen mode, so you can view the interface in full screen, as the name suggests. Now that that is all taken care of, let's go ahead and back out. Next up, we need to actually install our emulators. RetroArch works a little bit differently than you might expect in that you kind of download emulators a la carte, and RetroArch also calls emulators cores. So to do this, we're gonna to head to Online Updater and then Core Updater. This is gonna give us a menu to download different emulators for different old consoles. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Nintendo one. So we're gonna scroll all the way down until we get to Nestopia, which is a well-known Nintendo emulator. Once that's installed, we're going to go ahead and update a bunch of stuff. Uh, basically select each of these and click OK to download tons of different things. Uh, info files, assets, configuration profiles, cheats, databases, and more. Overlays and shaders are two things we'll get to at a later date, uh, but you might as well grab those while you're here. Now, RetroArch is basically configured to run one emulator, a Nintendo emulator. Thankfully, we also have a Nintendo game but we need to tell RetroArch where that game is located. So we're going to dive back into the settings and head down to Directory. And we're going to scroll to the File Browser Directory. This is kind of the parent directory of all of your ROM files, which we're going to go ahead and assume you already have. In my case, I'm just using one single file and one folder, so we'll just go ahead and select that now. Uh, multiple ROMs and multiple folders, you want to just select the most parent directory because that just gives you easy access, basically. Uh, then we're going to head back to the Add Content setting, and then we're going to click the Scan di This Directory option. This basically scans whatever directory you had selected in the previous step, and shows you whatever games you have in there. In my case, I have a single Nintendo game. If you do have separate directories, you will want to scan them individually. So if you have all of your Nintendo games in one directory, all of your Super Nintendo games in another, you will need to scan them separately. Now, once you do scan a game and it finds it, it'll show you a small icon for that console. Go ahead and just tap right to get over there, select it, and select the emulator we chose in the previous step to match up that emulator with that ROM. You tap that and you're good to play. There's a ton more to RetroArch, so head over to Lifehacker for more info on how to set everything up.